Sometimes after an interview, I feel I just have to revisit that guest soon, as he or she has so much to say that would interest, help, inspire you, our BBTV viewers and listeners. One of those guests stood out a mile, which is why we're off together now to Australia to revisit that brilliant marketing expert, Annalise Warren. Hello again, Annalise. Hello, Malcolm. Thank you so much for having me back. Oh, it's beautiful. Wonderful to be able to go to Australia. Never mind, meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Annalise, the economic world is stumbling around at the moment, mainly because of the impact of COVID-19 and the fallouts it's caused. Many small businesses are under threat of closure. So how can marketing help them? Oh my gosh, Malcolm, so many different ways. Marketing can help you stay front of mind in the eyes of your of your client. It can, while everyone is pulling back, it can be the thing that helps um, people remember you, help people stay connected to you. And of course, if you are changing the way that you are working, then this is going to be the way that they find out about that and that they realize how you are being creative and how you are still still there to to serve them potentially in a different way. So marketing is is communication and communication is is really important. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Increasing visibility in these times when everybody else is um, removing visibility. Again, back to those businesses that are facing an uncertain future. The usual cry is, I can't afford marketing. But to me, that's almost like saying I can't afford to breathe. Surely not all marketing is expensive. How do you suggest businesses go about effective marketing when budgets are tight? You're right. Marketing is really, really important, but it doesn't it does not have to be expensive. So again, it right now, I think the key is really meeting your, your clients or your customers where they are and communicating that through, through your marketing. And so that can be content marketing that you are just creating based on think back, think all the way back to the buyer journey. How do people find out about you? How do they then fall, you know, in love with your brand and how, what makes them make a decision and think about the content that needs to go in those places and start creating that and distributing it far and wide. We're really lucky that, that we have social media (laughs) and it doesn't cost anything to be, to be using it. Yes, of course, a lot of it's kind of pay to play when we want to get that mark, that, out there a little bit more but there are so many different things that we can do so we can do content marketing we can do collaborations with other business owners that are potentially serving the same people but in a different way Um, we can go and network and get referrals in that capacity and we can also do what so many brands are doing right now as they can't go and do photo shoots and expensive you know on location marketing things which is get user generated content so put it back to to your audience and of course if you have done a really good job up to this point in creating that brand loyalty and connecting with your audience pre-covid then that user generated content that that reciprocity that that connection is still going to exist and really take advantage of that in a way that helps your market generate your marketing for you. Mm, I like that. Get your community, your customers to do the marketing for you. You're you're at the sharp end of marketing and fully aware of what's working and what's not. Where do you see where small and medium sized businesses should be focusing their marketing emphasis for the future? Is it video marketing, email marketing, new, new social platforms, community or brand building? What should be their priority? This one's a tricky question, Malcolm, because it's going to depend. <laughs> it's going to depend a little bit on on your business and who you are. But of course, video is going to be really key because the live component of video now is so so powerful. It's not it's not filtered. There's no scripting, and so that that connection um, is really is really seen. So I think that however you do it really come back to knowing your numbers around what is going to be the most effective how can i really connect to these to these people and help to sustain a relationship long term where are they are they hanging out on social media are they not at all and it's best to contact them via email um 
you know, just think strategically about who you're talking to and, and don't spread yourself too thin. Concentrate on doing a couple of things really, really well rather than, you know, having 20 buckets and mud garden hoses sprinkling over all of them and none of them are actually getting full. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. I like that garden hose. It's much better than the shotgun and rifle the, um, old analogy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk more about that top gun marketing tactic that both of us like, and that's video marketing. After all, we're here today together, aren't we? I found that many small businesses, though, are being slow into using video through a, a myriad of reasons, such as thinking it will be expensive shy to be on camera, not understanding it. What do you say to those doubters about video marketing's effectiveness? Goodness. Um, it's clearly very effective because look at how much it's blown up. Look at how much that Facebook and Instagram and the other platforms are favouring video content. If you look at, at the insights, you'll see that your video content is getting more exposure than, than still shots. And if you think if you're trying to create a relationship and it's through a screen, if you have a photograph and it is, I mean, we love it when we see people's faces, obviously, because we're people, we connect with people. And so if you have a photograph and you just have one snapshot of someone's expression and then think even just a one minute video you get I don't know a thousand more different expressions that come through that video and you really the connection is you can't even compare them really the connection that you get and you feel to someone through a video that you do to an image so if you are shy to be on camera it's just stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about your <laughs> about your customers really like put the put the image put the flip the the perspective a little bit and think about why you would be doing a video in the first place it's going to be probably to create some sort of content to serve your audience therefore it's not about you you just have to be thinking if this is worthwhile content then my audience needs to hear it and i need to not be robbing them of the opportunity because I don't think maybe like my hair's not going to look very good or someone's going to pick apart the words that I said or whatever the thought pattern is and thinking it will be expensive well this is proof Malcolm we're, we're connecting from opposite sides of the planet via you know via zoom and it's it doesn't cost anything and most of us have cameras on our phones they are perfectly good enough to be able to create video. I think, you know, if you do wind the clock back 10 years, then video was thought of as needing to be really polished and needing to be very professional. And yes, you'd be thinking tens of thousands of dollars for something quite short. It's just not the case these days. People run multi-million dollar businesses from their phone and a laptop. And there is no reason why we can't make video that, that easy. Yeah, excellent. Yes, I was just having a little bit of a, um, a snigger when you were talking through there. I mean, obviously, you know, you can help people make sure their video marketing is correct. One CEO I was interviewing the other day, uh, a lady CEO, <laughs> um, she was broadcasting it to me from her bedroom and uh, her husband walked in naked into the room. <laughs> <laughs> So, so perhaps, yeah, yeah. Uh, so perhaps uh, they need a little bit of little bit of learning, but I'm sure you can help them there. Look, I'm going to go back to that gorilla in the room type question regarding marketing cost. When times get tough, financial managers cut marketing and they cut training. That's the easy thing to do because they've not been measurable. How do you help clients measure the effectiveness of their marketing spend? Well, now with digital marketing, that's the beauty of it. It can be so, so measurable. Um, I'm on the board of a charity that does, does work with vulnerable communities and we were looking at different marketing options. And one of the, one of the other board members is, um, is a traditional type of marketer, you know, being in PR, that sort of thing. And she wanted to go with radio. And then I was talking about digital marketing and you just kind of can't compare knowing how many people are listening, how many people are viewing, how much they listened, 
where they listen, you know, all of that, what their what their connection paths were to your website, who actually took action. You can really measure that now. And yes, there is a cost in buying that data. And initially you aren't going to get, it's not going to be as cheap as it could be because you do need to test things. I mean, we're taking it to market. We don't know how it's going to perform if you haven't done it before. But that being said, if you are talking with someone who has experience in your industry or experience with those those mediums, they should be able to give you benchmarks and ideas about the type of costs that you're looking at. And again, I think that it's not about spreading yourself too thin and doing everything. Think really strategically. Who is my audience? Where are they? And again, with the buyer journey, what can you do? in more cheaper mediums, potentially through collaboration, or what do you actually need to spend money on in terms of conversion or retargeting or whatever that happens to be. But but get advice if you if you haven't done any paid marketing before um, or you're looking at your marketing spend that you have been not measuring so well, really take it back to basics and and think about what is going to what's really going to move the needle? What's going to get you what you need right now? Mm. Excellent advice there, Annalise. And I hope my viewers are taking note of your uh, URL that's on the screen behind me. You work around the world with customers. I suggest that the trend we will see increasingly is that customers, both business to business and business to consumer, will buy from what we may call the conscious business, the one that's aware of its responsibility and shows true care in elements such as environment and people. That's likely to create the demand for conscious marketing. How do you help businesses achieve such consciousness? I think it's about really making sure that your business is focused on the consumer, like all good businesses are going to be focused on the audience, not on the product or service that we're in love with, but really what is the need and where where are people and what do they want and what do they care about? And especially now, especially in this time um, with COVID where things, it isn't business as usual and things are different and lots of people are flocking online. The way that we differentiate ourselves is by being ourselves, being unique, talking about what we care about, what we stand for, Um, what our convictions are, why we do things differently and being transparent in that way. And also I think it comes down to meeting our customers where they're at now because that's probably not the same place that they were at six months ago (laughs) and potentially not where they're going to be in another three or six months. So staying connected to, to where they are right now and think about how we can be empathetic to that and potentially be molding our business to to meet those changing needs and that doesn't mean doing a full overhaul but it does mean especially small businesses we have the ability to be agile we we have that capacity most of us to make a pivot but I would suggest that it is that just a little pivot if you can rather than going to fully fully changing everything unless of course you're in a business like tourism or you know, events or some hospitality. There's a lot of industries that have had to do a full swing around. Yeah, yeah. But I like your thinking there on just a small pivot, you know, you don't have to go with the full hog. Annalise, do you think in these tougher and uncertain times that marketing has to get and look tougher, you know, greater comparison pricing adverts, more war room type planning? Or do you think that's the wrong direction? And if so, which direction should businesses focus their marketing for the long-term future? I think long-term, it's about connecting with your customer for that long-term. And again, if you are trying, if you are staying connected to your audience and you are doing your best to meet them where they're at and they can see that and you are con- communicating with them, then they're going, that that trust factor is going to to be exponentially larger than it would have been without this, you know, without, without where we are right now, that they're experiencing that you're being adaptable, that you actually do care about them, that you are trying to, yes, you're trying to maintain your business and your livelihood and all of that and that of your staff, and so you should. But if we're focusing what we're doing around our customer and that long-term relationship, then that is going to be the thing. I don't think that 
price comparison is is the way to go. I don't think that the race to the bottom um, is going is ever really a good idea. We should be always thinking about what is the value that um, what is the value of what we offer, and the people are still spending money. They they might be spending money differently but the money hasn't just disappeared into thin air. It's just being channeled more carefully. It is being channeled in different ways. And so think about what those ways are and and what the needs are. And it doesn't mean that you have to discount your services. It just might mean that you aren't doing really heavy sales on the same things that you were doing. Again, get creative with your marketing rather than the price comparison side think about connection think about long-term relationships i like that get creative with your marketing annalise last question so time for my traditional granting of three wishes to my guest you have three wishes for how businesses should adapt or change their marketing to meet these new times so what are your three wishes uh my three wishes are for openness. I hope that businesses are more open to being doing things in a different way, to not just sticking to what they've also always done. I wish for creativity because that, again, is going to make you stand out. It is going to make things interesting. It is going to keep things exciting. And for empathy because Yes, like I said, we are. We do need to keep our businesses alive. It's good for us. It's good for the economy. It's good for everybody. But to to potentially make just to make sure that you are filtering that through through empathy, so that you aren't alienating yourself away from your clients as you do that. Mm. Annalise Warren, it was well worth the long flight to Australia to meet you again. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much, Malcolm.